Russ Heaps, and welcome to this episode of Beer to Whiskey. In my constant search to an attempt to spread the gospel of good taste, today I find myself in Whitefish, Montana. Um, I'm at the Great Northern Brewery and uh, that has some terrific beers. We're actually, it's a little noisy in here because we're actually sitting over top the uh, brewery floor, so you're going to hear a little, a little racket. It's, it's for authenticity. Um, but anyway, so joining me today is a buddy of mine from, geez, what, 50 years? Probably, yeah. F 50 years, uh, Wrangler Rick Fowler. Uh, he's my co-conspirator uh, beer drinker today. Um, here we've got Roger Fingar, who's one of the brewers here at uh, Great Northern. And sitting next to him is Nikki Bates. And she's sort of the marketing uh, person who comes up with all the great ideas for, for moving this along. Uh, guys, thanks for inviting us. It's, uh, we're, we're happy to be here. Thanks for joining us. Um, let's, just go, let's just jump right in. Give me a little background on the brewery, how this brewery gets started. Um, in 1995 was the first year we ever rolled a bottle off the line. Um, Minot Wessinger had bought the brewery and when he built it, it was kind of state of the art for its time. Um, had a, has a gravity flow system. Um, and since then it kind of just has evolved more into a craft brewery rather than brewing one type of um, beer, which was Black Star. We're more of, uh, yeah, specialty beers, craft beer. Um, yeah, so that's how it's kind of evolved. We're moving into cans on May 1st. Yay. So that's kind of an exciting move for us. We'll be able to be a lot of other places. And um, being in Montana, cans just are kind of a no-brainer for, you know, the outdoors and rafts and rivers and lakes and stuff. So. so Roger, how did you get started in this? Um, how, did you, how did you decide you wanted to start brewing beer? Uh, it goes back to when I was living in Colorado. Um, I would frequent um, the breweries um, in the Denver area and found some really awesome brews. It was a really exciting time, you know, we're, we're talking 2000 and 2010. And, um, it's sort of, that Colorado is sort of ground zero uh, for craft beers out in Southern California, I guess. Right, yeah, it definitely, definitely is. It's definitely a good place to be if you're a brewer or a beer lover right. of any sort. Um, and uh, so I, I would frequent the breweries with my girlfriend and uh, taste the beers and found some really awesome, exciting beers. And uh, there was one brewery uh, in Aurora, Colorado called Dry Dock Brewing. Uh, we go there almost every night. And uh, <laughs> I, they started out as a homebrew uh, supply store and they just grew from there. I mean, it was a homebrew supply, they would have a couple beers on tap, and then they just got bigger from there. So they still maintain the homebrew side, and it's actually connected to the brewery. Um, so as we were sitting and having beers and eating popcorn, uh, I'd always stare over and see the cool contraptions that they'd have on their shelves, and just be amazed by uh, you know the amount of people that were going in and out, and buying all these ingredients and buying these gadgets and I said I wanted to be a part of that I want to make some beer so my girlfriend bought me a home brewing kit and uh, the rest is history <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of money and spent a lot of time I think the Christmas that I got that home brewing kit I immediately opened it up and started brewing on our flat top range <laughs> that was uh, we had we had to we had to reschedule our Christmas dinner to a little bit later. Because of that. Well, you got to have your priorities. Yeah, you got to have your priorities. <laughs> Nikki, a question that I always ask uh, marketing people when when I've got sure. them on the panel is, uh, are you a beer lover who turned into a marketing person, or are you a marketing person that came here to love beer? Both. I mean, I've always been a beer lover. Um, in college, was kind of when I got more into the craft beer scene and less of you know the watered down stuff right um and so that kind of yeah just became a it was kind of an art form i'm a big art fan so i kind of it was amazing that you can just do so many different things with beer you know so um definitely was a beer lover first i went to college for marketing so it kind of just um came to fruition that way i feel really fortunate to be in this industry it's super exciting when you started here did you come in as a marketing person or did you come in as I a did. bartender or what yeah so i was also living in denver for a little while um and i actually grew up in whitefish it kind of uh yeah just happened and it was exciting moving back to my hometown but um yeah i just started right off the bat i do retail and marketing and um, pr so roger what was what was the first beer that 
turned you on to craft beers? Do you remember what the first beer was, your AHA beer? Um, the AHA beer, uh, I, I gotta say it was probably Fat Tire. Um, just the complexity that right. is in that beer was unmatched at the time. And right. just these amazing, you know, nutty flavors combined with these earthy hops. It was just incredible. And my palate has definitely changed since then, you know, as I think a lot of people when they first get introduced to craft beer. Sure. You know, um, it has changed to more of the hoppy side of, of things. Uh, I'm a hop head for sure. But, uh, but, but New Belgium is, uh, Fat Tire is probably one of the most balanced beers I've ever had. And still today it holds true. Is that, is that what you drink when you're at somewhere and you can't get a great northern beer? Is that normally your go-to beer? Um, yeah, because usually bars around here will have it. I'll go for that or Sierra Nevada. Yeah. You know. <laughs> easy. Easy, yeah. Yeah, easy choice. You can almost get one of those at any bar. So. <laughs> Nikki, what was your aha? Without seeming like um, too posed at all, it was honestly going to the Sun IPA. It was the first IPA I had ever had. Um, and I was in college, like I said, um, I only really drank it because it was from my hometown, um, which interests me. Because right. as a kid, I drove by here all the time, you know, and it was, I was like, oh, the brewery, but it was kind of this far off thing. So finally, when I was, you know, of age to drink beer, um, I tried it and it just kind of unleashed the whole craft beer thing for me. It gave a whole new meaning and, yeah, idea to what beer can be, so. What, what, yeah, it was the going to the Sun IPA. What is your go-to beer when you can't get one of your beers? Whiskey. <laughs> there you go. A girl after my own heart. <laughs> no, um, I would say, I mean, I love pale ales. Um, yeah, I just, I like to experiment if I'm traveling or anything. I always like to try the local beers, you know. I ask the bartender, um, you know, what do you like? I'm kind of one of those people, which I hate. hated when people ask me that, but right. um, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of whatever, whatever's good and whatever's local is kind of where I'm at with that. And White Whitefish is a great place to have a brewery too, because you've got the ski crowd in the winter. Yep. You know, you've got the summer crowd, the hikers, the glacier folks, and mm -hmm. I mean, if you had to have a, a neat microbrewery, Whitefish, Montana is a good place to. Yeah, to have. definitely. Yeah. There's a lot of outdoor loving people around here who also love beer. They kind of go hand in hand, I think. So. What is um, what has been the biggest hurdle to going to cans? I think just kind of logistics. I mean, it's a huge transition moving out um, our bottling line and kind of timing everything right and getting everything manufactured, um, and just kind of getting all those pieces put together and you know scheduled and it's just a lot. It's a big big thing and. Yeah, we're just really excited. Um, I think that if we have some hurdles, they'll be yet to come, but um, we'll get over them. And it's one of those really you don't excited. know what you don't know yet. Exactly. <laughs> do you all self-distribute also? I saw a truck loading a little earlier, so do you're, you, you know, you go through? We uh, have to wholesale. by, yeah, um, state Montana law, you have to go through a distributor to get it. Out, the, nur so. the nurse is here. Oh, <laughs> Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. Wow. Yeah. Perfect timing. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Maddie. You know, there's a, lot more a there's a lot more circles on here than glasses. <laughs> right here. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, what before, a sweetheart. Yeah, bef yeah she's, um, before we launch into these, what are we, what are we drinking here? Um, this is uh, the Big Mountain Tea Pale Ale. Um, it's an American style pale ale that uh, has. Bunch of mer a bunch of fruity, citrusy hops, uh, and the unique part about this beer is it has uh, Earl Grey tea and bergamot extract. In it. What uh, is this your recipe, or is this somebody else's? Um, this is uh, our head brewer's recipe. He collaborated with the musician who came into town, and they uh, released this beer for a concert uh, before I was here. Um, and he actually came in and brewed the beer with them, and um, we kind of, you know, made made a couple changes to it, and you know, made it, uh, you know, even better and this is what you have here today, and we're going to be it's, putting this in packages here soon. Yeah, so. it's it, it's really tasty. We're, yeah. Rick and I were talking earlier when we were setting up that, uh, man, it's a great patio beer. It would be a great beer mm -hmm. out in the summer, sitting, you know, by the pool or by the lake. And um, uh, it's, it's... A nice cold can. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
So were you here when they brewed this the first time? I wasn't, no. Okay. Um, and it kind of it was a rotator, and it was coming back every year, and then it just really, I think, caught on. And so it, the demand for it um, kind of naturally progressed it into being a full-time tap handle. But no, I wasn't here. I think 2012 was the first year that it was brewed. The, I um, I, I'm j just curious that, of course, today everybody's putting everything in beers. But, but when this came out, if somebody went tea, what are you, tea? What are you talking about? Right, and and a lot of people will mistake it for hops too. I mean, if they if we don't tell them it's a tea pale ale, you know, they say, what kind of hop is that? It does have just, a hoppy, hoppy right. so it doesn't. Yeah, and that's why we love it so much because it plays well. You know, right. as a brewer, we can really you know smell the tea and smell hops and say okay these these work together what do you think that she brought to us do you have any clue here what we're looking at um we could give it a guess this, this i'm going to say is a guy on a buffalo coffee stout okay this is this is like uh, uh a, a quiz <laughs> all right okay <laughs> that's See if fine you know i think we could get it this <laughs> is definitely guy on a buffalo which if you're um watching youtube Watch the guy on a buffalo video after this. <laughs> um, it's hilarious. It'll get stuck in your head. It'll get stuck oh, in your head. Oh, fun. Um, I'm going to say this is a cutter pale ale. Yeah. This is Roger's recipe. Can you yeah. tell that it's cutter for sure? Yeah, it's cutter. I could tell that it goes. So, this that. is Roger's, one that. of his homebrew recipes that um, is delicious. Made the big time. You guys can. Yeah, pass that it started around. as a homebrew recipe that I've been working on for the last seven years. and. Uh, Since he got his homebrew kit, yeah, I'm just basically. <laughs> and before I was a um, before I was a commercial brewer, I entered it in a competition and it won. And it was actually first brewed at Flathead Lake Brewing Company. Uh, I went down there in their ten barrel facility and brewed it. And then uh, you know we ended up making it here and well, I've made it the last two years. So Ro nice. Roger, let me ask uh, for people who might be thinking about brewing at home and have never done it. When you when you first got it, when you got the kit. Did you use the pre-mixed stuff, or did you come right up swinging and, and come up with your own recipes right out of the box? Um, I started with the like with an extract kit, so you don't have to mash in. You just get the right. the mash, the basically wort concentrate uh, pre-mashed. So it saves some time and some equipment. That's usually the best way to start out brewing. Definitely is as an extract, and then you can get kind of used to the process and used to the sanitation. And just used to you know the feel of, of, of right. brewing a beer. So. Right. Well, how long did it take you to go? You know, I've got this idea, and and brew something that you came up with. Oh, probably two brews. Really? Yeah, oh, wow. Great, yeah. I mean, you know, there's so many there's so many options now. I mean, a home there's thousands of homebrew supply stores. You can go online and order just about any ingredient. Right. So there's so many hop varietals out now. You know. Um, endless options, so it's really it's it's really easy just to kind of start creating. Do you remember what you brewed the first time? The first your own. Your own? Uh, my first was uh, single malt, single hop, I think, with amarillo and uh, Maris Otter British pale malt. Very okay. simple. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Montana's a great source to get you know your grain and your products. Yeah, so we hops. get a lot of our hops locally um, from a. Purple Frog Farms, and we have Glacier Hops Ranch out here in the Flathead as well, um, and they grow lots of hops. So um, tons of our hops, yeah, are, are so sourced locally. Um, we do a hop swap every September, so eat, no matter you know if you grow hops for a living, if you have some hops growing on your back patio or whatever, um, we have people bring them in, all these local growers, and we trade them for beer cards. So our frog hop is a community lager, we call it, or community ale, excuse me, but. Um, that we do every fall, so it's kind of like a mixture of all these local hops around the region and one beer. That's so. pretty neat, so it's sort of pretty vertically cool. integrated. I yeah. mean, you can source it locally and yeah. yep. brew it, and I'm almost a farm to table kind of yeah. Yeah. concept. We're really fortunate right. in this area, and our, our uh, base malt, actually, that silo right there uh, is full of um, Montana grown and malted barley, and that's grown in Great Falls and malted in Great oh, really? Falls. So wow. we're really fortunate where we're located geographically. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're close to where some of the best hops in the world are, you know, are, are grown too. So we're definitely at an advantage here. Is there is there a beer that you guys don't brew that there's sort of a, a groundswell for you among the among you all that you want to brew that you would like to? 
try and offer? Or? Um, well, I think um, sours, you know, a full-on sour program is, as a brewer, is, is, is our dream on our, our brew team. Um, you have to be really careful with that, and, you know, we're going to make sure we take all the precautions before we just dive into it. Um, sure. But, uh, you know, it's prohibited by space and sanitation as well. Right. So right. eventually we'd like to just be able to brew uh, some aged sours. You know, we do we do uh, about two sours a year right now, but it'd be nice to have a full sour yeah. program. How many barrels a year do you guys right now? Uh, right now we're around 8,000 barrels a year. Wow. So it's not huge, but it's substantial. Right. And for the size of the building, too, yeah. you know. Yeah. And we're brewing about seven of those are brand new beers. We call them our Bushwhack series, beers from off the beaten path. <laughs> um, so those are beers that we've never brewed before, first time. Um, so we are always trying to do new stuff. We actually do a staff survey at the beginning when we do the scheduling. Um, and we give options, you know, like what, what would you like to see brewed? And then we take that staff survey and we kind of put it into, you know, what we can feasibly do and stuff like that. So we do take some insight from, you know, what we want right. as staff and employees here and stuff. Well, you, guys have a, you guys have a restaurant, right? You, you, um, we you have a kitchen. We do sandwiches and um, nachos and stuff like that. Okay. It's not a full scale a big, restaurant by any means. We're definitely beer first. Yeah, <laughs> but do you, do you put any thought into either way, either creating a menu where the food will complement the beer or creating beers with the um, so we do pairings on our release parties. We'll do kind of a beer pairing. We actually, when we came out with our sour, did a cheese plate sour pairing that was really nice. Um, so we definitely, for the release parties, we try to do like a small style pairing with the beer to kind of get into that because it is really amazing food and beer. Like you think wine and cheese and stuff, but food and beer, it's just as, sure. yeah. just as exciting. Oh, yeah. How many beers will you typically have on tap that you're pouring? Or you rotate, you've got staples, and then you have ones that you're rotating. Yeah, so we have our flagship beers um, that are always on. Then we have our seasonal rotators that we, um, so like TPA was a seasonal rotator, now it's a flagship. Um, and then we have the bushwhack beers that we brew it once, and when it's gone, then it's gone, you know. And maybe if it was really well received, um, then it'll come back the next year, and then it'll be a seasonal rotator. So oh, okay. it's kind of this process. But we have about, yeah, 12 beers and a, a root beer that we brew for the there's kiddos. Nothing, there's <laughs> nothing better than craft brewery root beer. It is. It's delicious. I usually have one a day. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. My, that's my lunch beer. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's amazing. All right, so before we're out of time, let's talk about the other ones here that we haven't talked about. What are these? Okay, beers? so we did a cutter. This is a saison, so okay. this is one of this is what just came out on the first. Um, if you guys want to try that, it's. Yeah. I like a saison. It's a yeah. nice summer beer. Yeah, exactly. This one um, was pretty fun. We got to work on this recipe for the last half year. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. I like we that. we used a French saison yeast in that, and uh, we dry hopped it with uh, some nice earthy uh, and lemony hops. Um, just to kind of complement those um, fruity esters that you're getting from the Belgian yeast strain. And uh, it's the driest beer that we offer. Uh, yeah, it's not, uh, and it's not really overpowering at all. It's right. really a subtle. Very mellow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, we, how long will you have this on? Will you have it through the summer or? So this is one of, like I said, those bushwhack beers that we brew. Um, I mean, if it does really well, then it can come back yeah. essentially. but. It's one of those ones that we brew it, and when it's gone, it's it's yeah, gone. It's but we have been distributing that one too, so it might go a little quicker than I vote some of the others. But good. yeah, I love it too. Um, this oh, is Good you. Med, so this is one of our flagships. This will be in a can as well. It's a um, red ale. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, it's called Good Medicine Montana Red Ale. Do you guys? I, I assume since it's a year round, if you sell a fair amount of this. Reds are kind of a tough, those are kind of a tough sell. Yeah, um, I mean, it's one of our flagship beers, so it's definitely, if you if you like a red ale, if you're a red ale drinker, you know, you're excited. That's going to be the wild huckleberry. It's a lager. Um, it's made with hand-picked fresh huckleberries, which only grow in the high elevations of the northern Rocky Mountains. Um, so, kind of goes back to why we're so lucky to be geographically located where we are, because we have all these really unique 
ingredients oh, wow. that we can use. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's a fruit. I mean, like it's a fruit beer, but it's not like a fruit beer. You know, it's not as sweet really as you think. And you all are batting a thousand. I mean, they're all great, good, good across the board. Yeah, what a great Glad variety. Hear it. We try to keep things fresh for sure. I mean, you know, constantly yeah, the, coming up with new recipes. The fruit's more on the finish in this than it is up mm -hmm. front. Right. It's good. That is tasty. That's tasty. Um, and I think that's it. And then we had the cutter, guy in a buffalo. I know you like these, Russ. Yeah, I'm a, we'll I'm a dark. Not your I'm, way. A, I'm, a, I'm a dark beer guy. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm not exclusively. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm a little bit of a beer, I guess beer whore. Um, <laughs> but uh, because I will drink other things, but I'm yeah. I'm a brown porter stout guy at heart. It's, it's what I really like. Okay, guys. Um, I appreciate the invite. Yeah. Uh, and I love that you I do, uh, have, yeah. shared some time with us. Um, we're uh, we're just we're really happy to be here. And uh, uh, with that, cheers. cheers. Cheers, guys. Yahoo. Test us a slowly, and we'll see you next time.